the name but three, he determined to explain to us the life of birds. The result is going to set our eyes and ears agog about the, about the bird world and further cement that great British love affair with our number one wildlife broadcaster. The series starts next week, but before we meet David, a sneak preview, a sneak preview of something remarkable. So some birds have refined their technique. They station themselves beside pedestrian crossings. Wait for the lights to stop the traffic. Then, collect your cracked nut in safety. That is such an amazing sequence. David Attenborough is here with us right now. Good morning, David. Morning. How long did that sequence take to shoot? I mean, how long did you actually watch that? amazing crow. Well I, well, I wasn't there, but it didn't take very long because it does it every day. I mean, if, you, if you're a natural history cameraman and, and you've got a, um, a, something, an action that happens every day and several times a day, you're in clover. And that was one of the ones where you were in clover. It's when, when something only happens once a year and then doesn't bother to do it in the year you're there, you wouldn't worry. Yes. What's, what's the longest you or your team have ever had to wait for something? I mean, oh, yes. Years. Years. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And, and uh, we've all heard about El Nino uh, wrecking or changing breeding seasons and so on. And, and during this last three years, El Nino has changed all kinds of things. And so we turned up to gone to very, very remote places because something I saw there last in May ten years ago. You turn up again, it's not happening because of El Nino. And so um, we didn't get it in the end. So that's the longest we've waited, as it were, because we're still waiting. <laughs> still waiting. <laughs> and was it easy to pick life of birds as the next thing? Yes, pretty well, because uh, birds are by far the most popular um, uh, group of animals in the world. Everybody sees birds all the time. And most people have a relationship with birds, um, and a lot of them adore birds, and they are miraculous things. But the strange thing about birds, of course, is that they're not, we, we tend to take them for granted, but they just lob into our lives, as it were, and then suddenly disappear, go away, you never see them again, you don't know what they're doing, you know, they've got most of their lives as a mystery, even though the birds themselves are so familiar to us. And are there, are there many dangerous birds in this series? Um, well, I would knock over by one, yes. Oh, gosh, well, yes, I'm easily knocked what over. What was her name, then? Not that sort of bird. <laughs> um, the, but, but you were knocked over by one, I was knocked over by a capercaillie, yes. A, a very uh, sex-mad capercaillie, uh, you know, which is a huge grouse which lives up in Scotland. And uh, there was this... He, he, they, the males have courts in which they try to display uh, in order to attract females, and if other males come along, they get very aggressive. And this male was, was pretty pumped up with the testosterone, and I came along just as an innocent little <laughs> broadcaster about to say something in a whisper, <laughs> you know, and this thing flew at me, not me ever. Well, that's, that's fascinating. <laughs> what, what, it, it really, you can't imagine that with birds unless it was a, a vulture or, or something mm. like that. What would you most like, David, people to get from this series, in addition to being Pleasure. entertained and pleasured? Pleasure. Pleasured. Pleasure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's, uh, well, you know, that's putting it down a bit, I think, because I think that the uh, reaction that people get from, that, from the natural world is not, it is pleasurable, but it's more profound than that. I think that there is a profound joy and delight that a lot of people uh, get from looking at the natural world, of which we are a part, and of which we have become increasingly divorced as we spend more of our time in, in cities and in houses. And uh, a relationship, uh, an insight, into what goes on out there brings joy to an awful lot of people. It certainly does. And in terms of future series, how do you decide what you do next? The life of fish? Lie in the bath, and sort of, you know, <laughs> wonder, wonder what I'd like to see next. Um, well, I don't know. I mean, there are a number of th ideas coming around, uh, one of which is that we ought to do something about the state of the world 
viewed uh, globally as we move into the third millennium. And in terms of the natural world versus humankind and so on, are you one of those people, David, who feel that, that in addition to living more in cities and towns, as you were just saying, that we are still not paying enough attention to preserving the natural life of the world? I mean, are you a, a doom-laden environmentalist in that sense? Well, I'm absolutely sure that uh, the world is, is, is getting poorer in terms of natural species. I don't think it's going to explode in the next uh, decade, um, and I don't think we're going to lose vast numbers of species, though some people do. Uh, it seems to me that uh, significantly we are not likely to lose more than, well, I, would, I wouldn't put a figure on it, but anyway, a, a relatively small number. But it is only because there are enough of people hanging around who are arguing to protect the natural world. And the thing is, of course, that, that the pressures on the natural world increase for one very simple reason, which is that we increase in numbers. Human beings demand more and more space, more and more land and build their houses and their railways and and so on, and, and, and more and more space to grow their food, so there's less space for the natural world. And that being so, uh, uh, then uh, the natural world is under pressure, and it needs protection from those who care about it. And people who watch your series learn a lot, uh, in addition to being pleasured and so on, as we were saying earlier on. <laughs> no, uh, that's different, being pleasured, but how do we carry on? <laughs> <laughs> references but uh, <laughs> but I mean the have you learnt things along the way that surprised you oh uh, the point is if you didn't learn if you weren't learning all the time you might as well give up really uh, because part a major part of the delight is precisely learning pleasure is a dynamic activity in my view yeah. <laughs> and and it's a, a question of progress and the more you discover well the, the pleasure is in the discovery in the discovery so that's really at the essence of what absolutely so and if you were putting something into the time capsule, what, what is the thing that's most amazed you that you've recorded in the course of this career that you would put into the time capsule? A dancing bird of paradise. Really? Why? Oh, just because it is um, one of the most astonishingly beautiful, unpredictable, amazing uh, and rare things uh, that uh, human beings can see. How much does the series cost? I don't really know, but it's, uh, by, it's not my job. Five million, something like that. But uh, on, the, on the other hand, one can say that it, we, one's getting it back, uh, that it costs the British license pair very, very little indeed, because they're sold in uh, America and Canada and Australia and, and New Zealand and Scandinavia and so on. Well, that in a sense, for, for projects that are that um, successful, answers my next question, but it still applies in general. Do you feel that really landmark series like this not if it sells as well as yours but landmark series costing five million seven and a half million or whatever are endangered by the digital rev revolution um well it uh, it is the bbc's function to produce things that nothing else kind of broadcasting can produce and if if only the bbc can produce this kind of thing then i think the future of the bbc to some extent depends on producing this kind of thing because they alone because they alone can do it. And if it's judged to be worthwhile, and it would be a loss to lose those sort of things, then in, that's a good argument for keeping the BBC going. Thank you very much indeed, David. Good luck with the series. Well, I know you've made it. You can't change it now. It's done, <laughs> isn't it? But uh, anyway, good luck Thanks with so the much. reaction to the series and everything. Now, in a moment...